Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Influential Women Podcast. I'm so excited. I have Miss Chris Hartman here, and what a gem she is to have in our community. So thank you for being here, Chris. Well, thank you for inviting me. This is, this is wonderful. And you've got this beautiful spring outfit on, like Matchy Matcherson, navy and green. You look so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, well, what do you want to know? All, all the things. <laughs> so, um, actually kind of grew up Colorado Springs, Denver area, went to, um, Colorado State University in Fort Collins, and that's where I met my husband. We dated during college, but then we didn't get back together again until 12, 13 years later. Okay. And got married. And I moved to Pueblo, which will be 33 years tomorrow. Well, happy anniversary. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a transplant, uh -huh. but I love it here. Um, it's been a great city to raise my kids in. How many kiddos do you have? I have two daughters, mm -hmm. and they are my joy, you know, my life. Um, and I don't know, kind of when I moved here, it was like, okay, well, now what do I do with myself? So one of the first things I did was join Junior League. And that's where I met you. And like, that's where we met. Yeah, so I've yeah. known you for, what, like eight, nine years it's now? It's been a while, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so I got involved right away, was treasurer and funds for a while. But back then, um, when you were 40, you were kicked out. <laughs> Oh, really? Yes. They didn't have the sustainer? You had to be a sustainer then. Oh, so you couldn't okay. be inactive anymore. Okay. And so I really wasn't inactive. I wasn't even five years before I was kicked out, you know. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know if you know Mara Beth Rayum, but she was president a few years after that and got in a bind, didn't have a treasurer, and so she called me and said, can you come back? We're creating the senior active oh, okay. category. And will you please come back and be treasurer? And I thought, oh, sure, whatever. <laughs> so I came back, and I actually stayed for about three, four years and did treasure and helped train some people for that and then went on and, and chaired um, Whale of a Sail for a couple of years. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. It was it was fun. <laughs> I love to antique. I love to garage sale. And so it was my, oh. it was my passion. <laughs> okay. So do you do that on weekends, especially when um, like, you know, garage sales start happening? I used to. Okay. I used to. Yeah. My girls um, were figure skaters. Okay. And still are. My youngest is actually the director of the skating academy at the ice arena. And so she's still involved. Wow. And so we spent a lot of weekends up in Springs, skating. And I would leave them at the World Arena and go garage sale. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so it's just a fun so hobby. So it was fun, yeah. but now i am kind of been told I can't bring stuff home. So <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So maybe you could start selling some stuff. I, I need to start selling, There's not a little buying. place here <laughs> where you can, like, rent a small booth and sell stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I've actually considered that. And, you know, yeah. so if I retire someday... That's, I'm going to have to start downsizing. <laughs> yeah. I start clearing things out. And, and so you moved to the Pueblo community, and what I admire about you is you jumped right in. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's what you have to do. I mean, do you feel like that's part of your success is because you didn't just sit at home or, right. you know, like complain that you didn't know anybody. You got involved I, right I away. I got involved, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, Junior League's been a great outfit outlet for that. And then, of course... As the kids grew, they were in ice skating, so we were involved with the club and stuff with that, and and then they were in 4-H, and so volunteered with 4-H for years, and mm -hmm. and so, yeah, just like being involved in things, and that's how you meet people. And Absolutely, and don't yeah. you think, I mean, when you meet those people and you get involved, mm -hmm. those connections, like, you take with you for the rest of your life, whether it's to get a job or maybe it's to help your daughter get into a, four I mean, I, you yeah. know, it's so important, those relationships yeah. that you make. No, it's wonderful. It really is. And it, it has helped with some connections along the way, you know, for mm -hmm. my girls. And, and what are you doing now? Well, I am the accounting manager for Pueblo Plex, which is the reuse authority out at the chemical depot. Okay. 
and I've been there 11 years. So you love numbers. I've worked with numbers forever, yeah. Okay. When I first moved to Pueblo, I got a job at the county, and I worked in the county attorney's office and got my um, paralegal certificate when I was doing that. But I did not enjoy that. <laughs> so when a job opened up with a home builder to go back to accounting, that's oh. that's what I did. So Awesome. Yeah. W- yeah. What is your why? My why? Uh, that's a hard question. What is my why? My why really is my family. Mm. You know, making sure that everybody's happy and successful and... and uh, doing well in life and you're still married still married so i don't know that because i only see you at women <laughs> events so it's like we have the the no boys allowed club that's and right. so i'm like are you still married like tell me a little bit about yeah, that so yes uh, like as i said college sweethearts and then mm-hmm. took a few years to get together but um we live out on the mesa um have a sod farm and cattle you have a sod farm we do. See, this is why I'm so <laughs> glad you're here. I get to know more about you. Yeah. What's the sod company's name? Uh, Lawn Ranger Sod. Okay, because I actually had one of my tenants to just say, hey, I need sod. Who do you recommend? So there you go. Lawn Ranger Sod, there yes. You go. And um, so we do that. We have cattle. and um, How many head do you have in your cattle? We have about 50 head of okay. um, registered Gelvy cattle, they're called. Okay. So um, that's yeah. really my husband's passion, and okay. thankfully, both of my daughters still, even though they're grown now and gone, will go to shows with him. That's awesome. So that's good. Do you love, um, I always <laughs> wish we had a cattle, but not the work that right. goes into because it's a lot it's of work. It's a lot work. of work, and it really it's seven is. days a week, mm-hmm. 365 days a year, so... Do yes. you, I, I would have loved to be part of calving season. Is that now or is that in the fall? He tries to be done from like November to February maybe, you gotcha. know. He's had a few stragglers here and there. Like he just had one on um, Easter. Aww. So, you know. There, there's Do you a go f- help? Do you ever get dirty and, you know, get your boots on? I used to. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the girls came along, that was like, okay, okay. that's your thing. Now, yep, there you go. That's how you bond with your father, and I'm going to stay at home. That's and... right. That's right. So, oh. yeah, so we do that. And then he has a lawn care company, too, so he keeps very busy. And like I said, 33 years tomorrow, which is kind of amazing. Wow, that but... is. And what are you going to do to celebrate? Um, well, I'm going to the Junior League event <laughs> tomorrow night. <laughs> so you're going to a, a girls' oh, night, night out. out. <laughs> So I told him, um, we'll have to celebrate on Saturday. And that works better for him anyway. Just, you know, he never gets home before dark anyway. So um, we're going to go up to the melting pot in Colorado Springs. We'll have a lovely time and happy early anniversary Well, thank you. you. So it's on the 22nd. 22nd. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what marriage advice, like 33 years of marriage, what (sighs) advice do you give to somebody like me who's only in it in about a decade? Patience is really important. Mm. Yep. (laughs) Yeah, very much so. And, you know, having somebody who really does have something 24-7 is... Oh, where they're busy all the time? They're busy all the time. (laughs) And so, you know... We've never really done like my family took vacations, you mm-hmm. know, and we drove across the country and with a trailer and did stuff like that. Um, ours were either around figure skating competitions or cattle shows or things like that. So it it it's different. And being somebody from city Denver, mm-hmm. it took a little getting used to. But you know, like I said, it it was a great way to raise my kids. And I wouldn't have done it any differently. Um, And I know you are a proud mom. Like, you are a very, very proud mom. Tell me a little bit about your daughters, because I know they're both very successful. (laughs) And, and, you know, that's... um, They get it all from their mama, so come on, (laughs) brag on them. By the way, we're drinking wine. We had a a little fair ladies meeting last week at my house. She goes, I don't really do red. I'm like, neither do I. So try this one. She's like, I actually like it. So very good. Yeah. So for the podcast today, we're drinking Adesso. It's an easy red blend. Just in case you were needing one. (laughs) If you needed some advice, it's very good. Um, 
So my oldest, Jessica, um, I don't know, should I tell her age? It's 31. Um, she, so both my girls, I was very fortunate. Both my girls did everything the same growing up. So 4-H and figure skating, I never had to split my time between soccer and figure skating or something like that. But that was very fortunate. Um, in 4-H, my girls did the livestock, cattle and sheep and all that. Very successful with that. But then on the other side, they wanted to try the cake decorating and the sewing and all that kind of stuff. So we did that. And I used to sew, but sewing for 4-H is like... Another level. Uh, another, <laughs> another level. <laughs> and thankfully, I had some very good friends from college who knew the ins and outs, so they helped a lot. And we were also very successful with that. And then my girls got into doing the fashion review in 4-H. And um, they both were very good at the modeling part and that, but Jessica loved that. She didn't particularly care for the sewing or the decorate your own clothes stuff. She creative clothing, I think they call it now, but she loved the modeling. Mm -hmm. And so um, her, our senior year of uh, high school, we got a thing from Miss Colorado USA. Um, would you like to participate? I said, well, maybe she'd think this was fun. Oh, yeah, I'd like to do that. So we did it the first year. Didn't know what we were doing. I mean, literally bought shoes at Penny's, a uh, formal that was too short because my daughter is like 5'10". Oh, wow. And She um, did that from her dad. She got that from dad, oh, okay. not mom. <laughs> yeah, the pictures, mom's the shortest in the family. And, um, and we bought a swimsuit. We went to some place. It was like October. <laughs> we're like, where do you buy a swimsuit in right. October? So we were in Denver on East Colfax somewhere pull into this swimsuit shop, and the gal goes, well, I'm closing in five minutes. I'm like, okay, so sh I'm just throwing swimsuits over the <laughs> thing in the dressing room, and we pick out a swimsuit. We go and do the pageant. She comes in. She was a teen then, so she comes in first runner-up, and we're like, wow, okay, um, maybe we need to do some more with this. Mm -hmm. So the next year, I didn't know all this was out there, but coaches and everything, <laughs> makeup artists, hair, coaches, the whole and works. The whole works. Mm -hmm. And she was then competing at the Miss level and won. Right. That is so amazing. Yes. And so it was awesome. And she was 19, went to Miss USA, and came in third runner-up. Wow. Which was you know, you're kind of sitting there in the audience going, I never thought I'd be doing this. Mm -hmm. um, and then to watch her keep advancing. But I have to say, 4-H, uh, all those things helped with speech, mm -hmm. you know, confidence, all of that. But if you can be on TV in a two-piece swimsuit and be confident. But she's a cute little thing, too. <laughs> yeah, she is, yeah. And... Uh, and she was the youngest contestant there so oh, wow. that year. So to be third runner-up was pretty awesome. How proud were you being her mama? <laughs> yeah, very proud, very proud. And then she went on and um, did a pageant in Spain, an international pageant, and won, uh, won that. Wow. And lived in Germany for a little while and then came back and lived with the director here in the United States for a while and then when she she went to school in Missouri to college on the Miss Colorado scholarship oh awesome and uh, Missouri America system came after her and said you need to compete and so she won Missouri as well and oh went my to gosh, the Miss so America she holds pageant two titles wow yeah and didn't place there in the top but you know still great experience and Mm -hmm. Again, more scholarship money and all that. So <laughs> that was good. Now she's a, a nighttime anchor in Evansville, Indiana, but that job ends next week, and so I don't know where she'll be. But <laughs> Maybe she'll come home and help with the, the cattle. I kind of suspect she won't, but, okay. you know, she might for a little while in between jobs. We'll see. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, so she's had some great things happen to her along the way, and then... My other daughter, Danielle, is uh, 
29. And I had to think about it a minute. <laughs> and she, again, excelled in 4-H figure skating. Like I said, she's still keeping up with the skating and coaches and runs the figure skating academy at the ice arena and is on – there's different levels of testing you have to pass, and she's passed everything in the free skate world and all that, and now she's working on international dances. To That's kind of the final – Wow. Levels. So That's she's fun. still doing that too, taking lessons. And it's nice to see them do something that you paid for all those years and continue to right, you have an interest in money. it. Yes. I yes. remember when I was a senior and I was dancing for Sarah Shaw, my mom's like, oh, I, oh, this is a payday for me. Mm-hmm. The last day we have to pay for dance mm-hmm. and costumes. And, you know, it's a, Yeah, it's the expensive. costumes and the ice time. Oh, yeah. that was just. So she did that and she. Um, she went to CSU Pueblo and got nice. her business degree. And now, what was your maiden name? Rosengren. Okay, never heard of that one. But. No, I don't think there are many of them in the United States. <laughs> the story I've heard is that it was kind of a name that they were given when they came in on Ellis Island. Oh, okay, um, because there were so many Swedish Johnsons and so you're this Swedish? or that, pretty much on both sides. Okay. Yeah. Now you're on the Influential Woman podcast. Who's been an influential person in your life? Um, I'd have to say my mother. Mm. You know, um, miss her every day, but she was one of those that was always encouraging you to do stuff. Um, I was very shy when I was in high school, growing up. Really? Yeah. Um, a lot of people at a high school didn't even know who I was. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, I went to a very large high school in Denver. So, um, What high school? I know you probably don't even get asked that question in Pueblo. Once you say Denver, I, they're like, I don't care what high school yeah. you went to. I do get asked it, and I'm oh, like, well, you? you don't know. <laughs> oh. um, Bear Creek High School. Okay. Yeah, and my graduating class was like 1,500, so it mm-hmm. was huge. So what did you admire about your mom? Like, yes, she encouraged you. Like she most moms was, should, yeah. but she was, and I always say this, I hope that when I get older or when I'm gone, that people will remember me as a very nice, caring, wonderful person because no, I, I'm, you know, everybody has great things to say about my mother. Mm-hmm. I mean, she, um, they moved down here after the grandkids were born from Denver and she volunteered at the bargain box, and there's still some ladies there who remember her with, you know, very kind words and what a lovely woman she was. And she was always dressed to the nines. Um, you know what? I feel like you were carrying all of her her traditions very yeah. well. Um, I mean, I was brought up that you don't even go to loaf and jug in sweats, and my kids. Mm remember that too and they don't go out without I mean I have to put on a pair of jeans I will not go out which is that is something that's going away you know oh, absolutely <laughs> you don't see that Do every leggings day count? would you judge me if I went and uh, my daughter wears leggings okay. a lot, so oh, I so can't like, I live in leggings <laughs> yeah she does too and okay but she also has the body for it you know mm. um it's it's a nice look and you're not sure about some of the others out there or the pajama pants or you know we've gotten away from that so what's one of your favorite memories of you and your mom um holidays at my mom's house um she would decorate to the hilt and I loved it and she was always um she always was very organized I'm not that organized I have even kind of gotten a little lazy about the decorating. The trees get done at Christmas. That's about it. <laughs> My mom doesn't even do it anymore. Really? She goes, I go to your house anyway. Why do so it? Why, even... <laughs> why do it? But I still love my tree. Mm-hmm. You know, I love to look at every ornament. My husband's like, just put them on the tree. Like, no, I have to look yeah. at them all as they go all the on. <laughs> yeah. What's one of your favorite traditions that your mom, you know, has passed down to you and you hope you pass down to your daughters? Um. Probably having family over for for holidays and things. Um, 
sadly, I think when like my mom's generation is has been gone in the family, my generation has not kept that up. Um, mm-hmm. Cousins and all that, we've lost touch. I would hope that maybe my girls would take that on a little bit. Mm. Um, I don't know if they will, but it would be nice. Absolutely. Yeah. It's sad to have lost the touch with all those relatives. Yeah, know? it gets harder and harder as each generation moves on and they have their own families. They have their and own kids. families. Like you get you, busy. and You just got to make the time. Yeah. You got to set yeah. a date and go for it. Right, right. What's you your know? favorite holiday? Christmas. Mm. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. So magical. Yeah. Magical I like time. Christmas. Yeah. Well, you were over, I mentioned earlier, um, at the house for Fair Ladies, mm-hmm. which is another, um, you know, we're both in the Junior League organization together, which is a group for women promoting volunteerism within the community, helping children, literacy, a, a bunch of different things. I mean, the mission changes from time mm-hmm. to time, but it's really just women coming together and making a positive change in their community. And I'm so blessed that I got to meet you. I think I did the fashion show for Girls Night Out, and that's yeah, where I first met you. You were one it. of our models, that's and it. she modeled for me a couple of years. Like, you were just like, yes, I will volunteer. Yes, I will yeah. help out, and I, yeah. I've always admired that about you. And then now we're also part of um, the Fair Ladies, which is another fun organization for women only. I guess we have a lot of women Women stuff. only stuff, but whatever. <laughs> but, and I'm sure you do because of the 4-H piece. Like, mm-hmm. we go in and we bid on animals. Um at the state fair one day out of the year it's yeah. really easy it's yeah. fun it's a good time and yeah i joined i waited until my girls were done with 4-h and but they benefited from mm-hmm. the uh livestock sale at the fair and at Pueblo county used that money also for college and um so i it's a very worthwhile organization and these kids learn how to work hard they really yep. have a work ethic, ethic that um, Our agriculture is losing. Yeah, agriculture really teaches those kids how to work. Yeah. So, what else are you involved in that I don't know about? Um, well, you may know, but I am on the Pueblo Day Nursery Foundation, and that um, was an organization also started by Junior League years ago. But they used to have a child daycare. Mm-hmm on 8th and Greenwood, I think. Um, And then when they sold the building many years ago and did that, um, they put the money in an account and a trust. And and I couldn't tell you how many years ago. I should have read the history. But anyway, um, it's wonderful. We just give out grant money once a year. Mm -hmm. We use the money that is... Um, earned on our investment and our investment stays pretty steady we don't do any fundraising we just pretty much rely on and what do you do with that grant money it goes to we have people um apply for grants um i know we give casa money um well thank you yes (laughs) (laughs) um i just went to the recipe for hope luncheon today for karen share we have um given them money every year so we help out nonprofits around the city wow, that do benefit kids. So, okay. you know, um, Care and Share and Casa and Posada and all that. Um, yeah. And I've always heard of it, but I guess I never knew, like, the extent of it. Yes. So thank you yes. for sharing that. Yeah, no, it's a it's a nice organization and, and just more fun. We don't do fundraising. We just kind of give money away. <laughs> right, which is the easy part. Yeah. Yeah. Know, um, my first influential woman was Andrea Aragon. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, she went from being the biggest fundraiser in town with United Way to yeah. now she gets to give money. And she really likes that yeah. end of things Yeah, no, a that's lot the better. fun part. And I've gotten to go and tour some places. And that's how I, I kind of was so impressed when I went to Karen Scher that they've become one of the places that I will give the most to. And hmm. And this year went to a um, housing thing Posada has um, oh, good. Well, started. if they need mattresses or anything, let me know. And uh, about. Okay. It, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's a uh, kind of an in-between home for homeless women with children. Okay. Like, maybe families, but just, a you know, an old hotel on off lake that they wow. kind of give them a transition from homeless to hopefully they can 
wow. move on. So, so if you know of somebody in that situation, there are programs just like this that yes. can help women and their children and their families, you know, move on to that next yeah. step because yeah. that, that stage is hard. Yes. And you yes. feel like nobody is out there, but there are people there are out here people. still in organizations to help you yeah. out. Yeah. That's incredible. So. Well, thank you for all the work you do in our community. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, well, yeah, I enjoy it. So what's, uh, what's your favorite thing about Pueblo? Um, I think it's a very friendly community. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to do here that people don't realize is here. Oh, absolutely. You know? So many things. Yeah. My husband used to say when we were in Fort Collins going to school that according to the TV and everything, the lines for the state stopped at South Denver. And he was so right, you know. And I still have friends that have not made that <laughs> <laughs> track Way down, down to Pueblo. Yes. Yeah, they just think it's so far away. And so it's I nice. always have to go gym. north. <laughs> but well, you, this year, you need to bring them down to the fair and be a fair yeah, leader or something. Yeah, there you go. That would be good. What's um, what's some of the best advice you've ever received? Um, well, That's a tough one. I'm not sure anybody ever really... Um, told me how smart and confident I I was, you know. I hope that I'm passing that on to my girls because it's something I kind of had to learn. Mm. Um, so that's the advice I didn't receive, I guess. Mm. And, and because I was so shy and stuff, it took me a while to realize that I did have a voice. And so what? What was it that made you realize you had a voice? I, I would say um, I volunteered a lot more once I moved to Pueblo, but in, in Denver I was a member of the alum club for my sorority. and So I think that kind of helped. I was a chapter advisor for the house at DU. So okay. That was a learning experience. What sorority? Alpha Chi Omega. Okay. And sadly there's only one chapter left in Colorado now so but I've always been sorry that my girls and either of them got that experience um, because it was those are my friends my lifelong friends are the ones I met in your sorority at my sorority oh so and you did that at Fort Collins Fort Collins I so I went to college in Greeley and I remember we there was like a sorority bookstore there where we had, would have to drive and like buy the paddles and mm -hmm. buy all mm -hmm. the things because we didn't have one but Fort Collins had one yes yeah. and y'all's fraternities and sororities were huge compared to ours <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah huge but I'm sure that was a good time it was a good time my husband what's your was, favorite memory he was an AGR Alpha Gamma Rho oh okay so you know we had some good times um did you meet at a frat party Yes. <laughs> I love it. I want to know the story. Tell me the story. Well, my roommate, when I went up there, I didn't know, walked into the dorm, and there were some cowboy boots there, and I kind of went, hmm, okay. But she was a gal from Ordway, and we became really good friends. And her brother was in Farmhouse, which was the other ag fraternity, so she wanted to do stuff with the other one. So we started being little sisters at AGR house, and that's where I met Greg. So, okay. yeah, and um, we just had some good times. Greg and I were dancers. Um, country dancers. Country dancers. See a really good country dancer. Very, that very what good. Heart? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and Will people you let him still spin remember me that. around the dance floor? Is he still a dancer? <laughs> he is, yeah. We don't dance as much dance. as we used to, but yeah. And That's then, what you guys should go do after the melting pot. Yeah. You should go to Cowboys across the street and oh, go Oh, there, <laughs> there you go. There you go. And then we also were on the square dance team in Fort Collins together. There was a square dance there team? There was a square dance team. Quit it. And it was cool. It was um, a double square. And so there were eight couples instead of four. And we performed under black light oh, and stuff. Cool. And so it was a performing team. And we traveled around on um, spring break and performed at various clubs around the state. I need, do you have a video of this? I need to see. You know, I or don't can you know reenact it. it? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know that we do have any videos. But it was pretty fun. Oh, how cool. Yeah. I'm so. sure you guys were good. Yeah. 
did all fun. the flips and yeah. tricks. And yeah, it was good. It was fun. So I pay was... money to see that. <laughs> I would. I don't even think there's a square dance team anymore. No, I, yeah. I've never even heard of such a thing. Mm-mm. It was fun. Oh. Yeah. So that was that's some of the funnest stuff we did. You know, mm-hmm. just the times, the sorority and the fraternity stuff, and the square dance team was fun. Yep, lots of good memories. Lots of good memories. Yeah, college was a fun time. Well, you've done a lot in your life. What What are some other goals or dreams that you want in your life to happen? Um, someday I'm going to retire. Don't let Russell hear this. <laughs> um, well, Russell, I was just thinking, hey, after this, I need to recruit her <laughs> over to snooze. How do I steal her until she retires? And... Um, my bucket list thing, which my kids are like, Mom, you need to get your knee taken care of so we can go do this, is a cruise down the Rhine at Christmas time for all the Christmas markets and stuff. So oh. that's my bucket list thing. I love it. And it'll probably be a girl's trip because the cattle need to be fed. <laughs> and you did surgery. I have not. You have not done no, surgery. I need to, but I've been putting it off. So, you know. That's, it's not easy. It's not easy to decide. You're just going to. Well, if it helps any, my mom had double knee surgery probably a decade ago. And it was much better after she got after it. After she got it. Yeah. Granted, she probably needs it again at this point. Yeah. But um, yeah. if that helps in any which way. I, mean, I know you have to you, be mentally you hear ready. Varying stories. You know, some people are like, mm. yeah, get it done. You'll be so happy. And others are like, oh, I don't know. You know. But walking. For long distances and stuff is is hard. Is hard. So well, just know when you have because you don't have any grandbabies yet, right? No, no. no. I was I thought that was going to be on your bucket list. Like I just want to be a grandma. But no, they're still they're well they're getting up there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's almost time. Yeah, you hear that, girls? It's almost time. (laughs) I suspect my youngest got married last year. Okay, last summer on Father's Day. So, um. HG probably will be the first one here at some point. To gotcha. So no big announcements you're going to do? Not that I've uh, heard of yet. Heard no. of. Well, and that's what so. my, my mom was like. I want to do this to keep up with my grand, you know, with well, my grandkids. Well, and I thought about that. <laughs> so get it now before you have the grandkids because if not, you're going to be out and you're going to like. But I will say when we do like Disney and all that, I just rent her uh, a little Scooter thing. And thing. it's just so much easier. Yeah. But then she can still be involved. Yeah. Yeah. Because ah. I not yeah, I cannot imagine yeah. doing Disney these days. I, yeah. yeah. But that cruise, that sounds... Doesn't that sound wonderful? It does. Yeah. So mm. that's my bucket list. I don't know. Good for you. Yeah. What are um, <laughs> three words that best describe you? Um, I would say kind and caring and um, a good friend. Hmm. I love that. Almost the same three things as your mom. Yes. Did you realize that? <laughs> Not really. No. Yeah. <laughs> but the same I things. said that's what I want people to remember me. Mm-hmm. Same as they do her. I love it. I'm sure she's pretty proud of you. What was her name? Joanne. Joanne. She was an awesome lady. Mm. Um, if you had a song that would best describe you or like your... Is it just like your jam, like either your walkout song when you're going to go up to bat? Like, what would that song be for Miss Chris Hartman? <laughs> um, you know, I can think of all these crazy ones like like Eye of the Tiger and some of these big, powerful songs. But I also, in the last year, year and a half, have gotten into listening to the 60s stuff. And anything in the 60s, I just... I know all the words. Those are the songs I love. I I just you like really 60s. enjoy that. Do you have a yes. favorite sixties song? Um, well, we just went to see the Jersey Boys, and so the Four Seasons oh, is like. Did you? Yeah, every time those come on, I just. Um, oh, that's a good play, isn't mm-hmm. it? That's it was really wonderful. I loved it. Yeah, it was um, great. So. I love it. And um, favorite movie. One of my all-time favorites is probably The Sound of Music. It's a classic. Mm-hmm. A classic. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Favorite and color? Blue. Mm. 
favorite daughter? I can't answer uh, that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I know you love them both very much. Yes, yes. I don't have a favorite. I though. was totally kidding. <laughs> now, do you guys have more than just um, like cattle? Do you have the goats and all that like you did? No. When, no. no. Okay. No. The, we had sheep during during uh, 4-H time. Okay. But we just Anyone? have cattle. And so yeah. how many how many acres do you live on? We have 80 acres. Good for you. Yeah. That's awesome. So, I yeah. love a little bit of land. Yeah. Now I'm in nice. the real estate world, so I'm loving, like, <laughs> land, and, you know, all the things. Yeah, you know, I came from the city, and now I live in the county, and I'm like, I don't know if I could ever go back to having a neighbor. You probably couldn't. It you would like be the weird. wide open spaces. Yeah, it would be weird. Yeah. There's a house across the street, but that's about as close as they get. <laughs> if you could have tea with somebody, dead or alive, who would it be? Or lunch, or, or whatever, lunch or something. I do, whatever you know makes you happy. I would have tea with the queen. Oh, <laughs> tea with the and it's her birthday. It's her today. birthday. Yes. Yes. Was she ninety six? Oh my gosh, the queen! Can you imagine what kind of party they are throwing her today? All I heard, she's kind of celebrating it quietly, but hopefully with some family. I don't know, but she just seems like she'd be a very interesting woman. Right. You know, um, and go have tea at the palace. Yes. <laughs> what would you ask her? Um, maybe how she how is she accepting all the changes in mm. you know royal royalty, the different decisions they've had to make because of the changes in the world and yeah, you know that that to me seems like. Something that would be very hard for her to accept, but she seems to have done very well with it. But. She's a cool lady. Mm -hmm. I would love to sit down with her. Just it doesn't get classier than the queen, right? Yeah, yeah. She's just got so much. Yeah. And I'm not British, but she's just. Now, kind have you of ever a fun been lady. to London? I have not. Well, you should no. go have high tea with her, yeah. or just at least high tea across yeah. the street, and feel like you're having it with the queen. Yeah, I need to. Go visit London on my way to the Rhine or something. Yeah, yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah. Put that I on did your... go to uh, my senior year to high school in France. but Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. That was fun. What was the highlight? Um, just being there, I got to ski in the Alps, which was um, icy as heck. <laughs> the snow was not great. Lived with a family that was really... Oh, three kids, and they lived in a small apartment. I mean, life was so different than what we're used to, mm -hmm. even back then. Um, and what an experience, because we couldn't call home. Couldn't, I mean, airmail letters was the only communication with home. And I was over there for four months. And So did you do like a, a senior to whatever it's called? It was um, exchange students. Exchange students, but... Nobody came here. Um, it was just a group of kids from Jefferson County, and we went over and lived with families. We didn't actually go to the French school. We were separated and had classes and learned French. The best thing was I didn't really know how to speak French, I realized, until I came back. And then nobody here could understand me. It was the funniest thing. But, oh. you know, you think you're doing so good in class. Right. And then you get there and everybody's going, what You're are like, you trying to down. say? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> so really learned French. What a yeah. neat experience. It was fun. Yeah. And that was, it was a cool thing that my dad agreed to let, you let go me go do, do that. How yeah. fun. Yeah. How fun. So. And something you've obviously never forgotten. No. No. What, you know, motherhood is joyous. It's hard. It's the best thing in the world. What's like a funny story or... Something, any motherhood advice that you have, like anything you'd be willing to share? <laughs> Without getting shot? No, get shot. I definitely <laughs> want you to get shot. They'll get over it. You're their mother. Well, I don't know. <laughs> um, gosh, I can't, I know there are some. Can't even think of any right now, but. So, um, I'll tell one on Danielle and she'll kill me <laughs> when she watches this, but if she watches it. Um. So because of what we, the way we lived, you know, it was going from school to 4-H things or skating and 
for years, my kids skated six days a week, and it was either Pueblo or Springs or whatever. Wow. So we were doing lots of homework in the cars and late nights and all that kind of stuff. So we're coming home from skating, eating dinner late night. It's dark. The cattle, we usually put them out on pasture on the corn stalks in the fall, you know, and uh, barbed wire electric fence around, and the cattle are out. And so Greg stops the truck, and we all get out, and we're all kind of figuring out how to get cattle in and get the fence back up and all that. And pretty soon Danielle's like, I can't get up. Greg's yelling at her, Danielle, you've got to cover that corner or whatever. And I can't move. And, of course, she's in skating tights and a little dress, and her tights got stuck in the barbed wire fence, (laughs) and she could not. She's laying on the ground stuck Uh to the barbed wire that is <laughs> she hilarious. can't move and Danielle you've got to go you know <laughs> guard that corner I can't <laughs> it was just it was pretty funny <laughs> she got a snag in her hose yeah and... yeah but you know those darn tights <laughs> but what fun memories yeah so fun memories good. growing up on a ranch yeah there's lots there's lots, lots of hard work there's lots yeah mm. but that's okay and Greg didn't have any sons, but thankfully, as I said, both his daughters like to come back and go to shows with him, and so they go to stock show. And what Kansas do you do? And what do you do for self care? What do you do to take care of yourself? Well, I'm probably very negligent about that, but um, the pandemic caused a few health issues because I just sat at my kitchen table and worked for. 16 months or two mm-hmm. years and didn't get out and do anything and so I've started doing a lot more bicycling stationary bike stuff and exercising a little bit and watching Good. what I eat um, I've always been a reader and mm. so I I read what's your favorite book I like James Patterson books what are um, James Patterson books um Kind of crime thrillers. Oh, okay. And the guy's very prolific. So you read, he writes like, two that's or three a big books. <laughs> self care thing for you because yes. you know, getting knowledge and reading like it's very important. Yeah, and I, I read. I I cannot go to sleep until I've read, even if it's a couple pages. You know, that's that's my thing, and and kind of go to bed at the same time every night and mm-hmm. read. And I love it. And what do you do for fun? Well, I'd love to say I go antiquing and garage sailing, but I'm not allowed to. <laughs> but I still get out once in a while and do that. And yeah. since things have opened up a little bit more, you know, I'll, I've made a couple trips to Springs to go to the big antique. What is your there. proudest accomplishment? My girls. Your girls, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Managed to raise two very lovely hardworking, responsible adults, and that's that's an accomplishment. You did a yeah. good job. Mm-hmm. And what's been a roadblock in your life that you overcame? Being shy. Being shy. Yeah. That sorority I, helped. Yeah, so it if did. So you're shy and you're wanting to get Join a your sorority. Box, <laughs> join a sorority. <laughs> it definitely did, and, and uh, a lot of people won't believe it when I say, I said I still, am, if I'm in a group where I don't know people, I have to force myself to go up and mm. talk to people and introduce myself. But I would have never known seeing you all the. That's what a lot of people say. Good job. <laughs> yeah, that's what a lot of people say. But mm. and what's unique about you? I don't know if there's anything very unique about me, really. What makes you mad? What makes me mad? Anything make you mad? I don't think I've ever seen you upset. Oh, but I can't get it. <laughs> I know. That's why I want to know. Um, I don't have much patience for people who drive crazy on the road or, you know, are rude or um, all these people who think it's okay to go around and break into houses and steal things and uh-huh. It's becoming a big issue out in the county right now. Yeah, and it's so sad. I'm just like, but we worked for all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Why do you think it's okay to come take all this? And so that makes me mad. Mm-hmm. I, I, 
That makes you furious. So I know not to drive by you then. (laughs) I don't want to make you mad. I can't say Uh, I'm the best driver. I try, but I'm not. Like the other night, I was going into town, had to make it, because everything closes at 5 now, the banks, the post office, you know. And since I work out at the depot, that's Mm. a track to get in there. And I'm going down 50 to get on I-25 to go to a bank, and there, there was an accident in the left lane. And so the traffic from the light at Bonfort on is one lane. And there are people who pull out of that and go up to where the accident is and then expect to be let back in again. And, and, just and you're like, like uh-uh, nope on a road. I know. I'm not letting like, you in. I'm like, why are you any more special than anybody else in this line? Right. You know, wait your turn. Absolutely. And Have patience. I, I just, yeah, patience is something that I think, I kind of think the pandemic took a lot of that away. But you have to have more patience these days. Mm-hmm. Restaurants don't have help, you know. Yeah. Uh, no, everywhere you go, they don't have help. And it's something you have help. to practice. It's and not you something do. you just have. It's something you have to practice yeah. internally yeah. and just. So you have to just be patient. Like, whatever, I'll get there when I get there. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm very, I like to get places on time, but sometimes that doesn't work. So. You seem you know. just so easygoing. Most of the time I am. <laughs> My, gr- my girls would probably tell you there had been a few <laughs> blow-ups. but You are, though. You're very easy. and Yeah, most of the time I am. So. <laughs> What's something that most people don't know about you? Probably a lot of what I've told you today. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Like, do you have a, like a quirk you do at home that, like, maybe your girls or your husband makes fun of you for? Or something at work that maybe Laura, I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of anything. Nothing quirky or no. nothing. Uh, I'm sure I have one, but. Embarrassing. I'm sure I have one I of like those funny too. Things. <laughs> Do you have a joke? No. No jokes? No jokes. Mm. No. I can't remember a lot of them. I might be, <laughs> I might start it and not be able to tell you the punchline. See, that's a good joke. <laughs> so, I can't think of anything. Mm. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. How often do you talk to your girls every day? Are you and no, I dare more? No, no. no. Um, Jessica is in Indiana, as I said, and really, the the nice thing about her being an anchor is I get to see her every day. Hmm. So you watch. We the, watch. How her, do you watch those news? It's on you online. Stream mm-hmm. Streamed That's online. Cute. So you so get your news through your daughter. I do. I know more about Indiana news than I do Colorado. Colorado, but um, so I miss that if she doesn't go into go somewhere else and be a reporter or anchor but um I only talk to her like maybe every other week or so um and Danielle maybe four or five times a week she comes over quite a bit after work and so I see her quite a bit Mm. so she's my helper you know she helps me do things and she's kind of trying to help me go through stuff (laughs) good so well, one day we need to go antiquing together. I would Let's love do it. it. I would love it. Yeah. Yeah. Any other big goals or ambitions? Anything you want to tell other women out there listening to you now? Oh, I don't know if I have any great any advice? words of advice. Um, I mean, just, I, I, I would say just try to be happy. I mean, do what makes you happy and, and, um, Really, the busier you are, the happier you are, I think. I don't know. Um, yeah, because you don't have time to sit around and You don't have time to feel yourself. sorry for yourself. I mean, I look back now on when my girls were growing up. I don't know how I did it all and no idea. But I know you have very busy kids, too, and a very busy life. And so you look back on it later in life and go, how did we do all this? But. Thankfully, at that point, I had grandparents' help and stuff mm-hmm. like that, too. So makes a big difference. It does. And you just do it. Mm-hmm. You, you just wake do up it. And you do it. You just do it. So and stay busy. Stay busy. Words and of advice. That's great yeah, advice. Yeah. And I really do think that if you have kids, um, getting them involved in stuff is very important. Um, Did you ever have a rule about being involved? No. No. It just kind of happened. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I have a rule in my house. Like, you have to be involved in one thing. In something. Yeah, in something. I don't mm-hmm. care what it is. I will support you, but you're not going to stay home and do nothing. Yeah, yeah. It just kind of happened. I don't know okay. that it was a rule, but gotcha. 
Yeah, well, you know, like, yeah. but we're just going to start, go do stuff. And so, you know, they started skating at two. And wow, two years <laughs> yeah, old? That is yeah. so young. Yeah, they were very young when they both started. And and uh, I remember one of the instructors at the ice arena when Danielle was, she was like four maybe, and she had passed up to a certain level in the lessons, and she skates out to this guy. He was kind of a curmudgeon from Springs anyway, and he was like, I'm not teaching her. <laughs> and we're like, but she can probably do everything better than the other kids in your class. But he just was like, nope, nope, I'm not <laughs> teaching her. And and so at that point we said, okay, well, I guess maybe it's time to start private lessons because he's not going to teach her. So, you know. So private lessons at two years old? Well, she was four. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, then it got crazier after that. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it's already crazy when you start now, competing. and we're not even like I know it's bizarre. And if like it's so crazy because if you don't start com- like competing or yeah. like finding your one sport at this young age, then you pre- pretty much miss the boat. Yeah, so crazy. But it I'm is. still like, we're gonna try the things that you want to try. Well, and it's and okay if we're to a try bit everything later in the game. We'll figure yeah, it out. We'll get okay. private lessons then. But, yeah, it's you know. okay. I think it's okay to try a lot. We did not do that with my kids, so it was kind of like skating and. If they fought back going to Springs at 6 o'clock on Saturday mornings, uh, we would have said, we're not doing this. But they never fought back. So, uh-huh. you know, I wasn't going to push them if they didn't want to do it. Gotcha. But they never did fight back. So. Mm. What, what does the word influential mean to you, Chris? Well, I guess I have always kind of viewed it like in particularly in relationship to your podcast is women who are like leaders in the city, in the community. Um, you know, there are some women who hold some great positions and do some powerful things in this community. And that would be what I thought, but maybe us little peons are right there too. I don't know. Stop it. Don't you ever talk about my friend Chris Hartman like that. Did you hear that? We No. All right, women. We never talk down about ourselves. That was a no-no, Chris Hartman. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Well, I've admired you for years since I've met you in Junior League. You truly well, I are. I appreciate are, that. You are a gem in our community, and you do so much, and you're so kind-hearted, and you're just a very genuine woman. I and appreciate that. I'm just so glad that you said yes, and I got to spend a little time with you today hearing your story. And This was fun. Yeah. This was You're fun. a sweetheart. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. For and being cheers. an influential woman. And cheers. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and thanks for tuning in. Join us every Wednesday on Women Wednesday for a new podcast to release. That's a wrap.